Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. When I meet with customers or speak at conferences, there are a bunch of questions that keep popping up. What does the name mean? Uh, where does the logo come from? How did the company start? Uh, what kind of problem is it solving? And how did it become so successful in such a short period of time? Well, all these are good questions. And I actually did a talk at a conference last week on this particular topic. And uh, well, it was well received, so I thought, why don't I record this as a video and share it with all of you so that hopefully I can answer all those good questions in one go. And in fact, I'm going to take you through a, a history of Hugging Face from the very early days until now, highlighting what I think are the critical steps that made Hugging Face successful. Okay, so let's get started. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up consider joining my channel and don't forget to enable notifications so that you won't miss anything in the future. Also, why not share that video on your social networks or with your colleagues? Because if you enjoyed it, chances are other people may enjoy it as well. Thank you very much. Before we talk about Hugging Face per se, let's set the scene. And I have to take you back to 2015, 2016. And when we discussed artificial intelligence or deep learning back then, um, everybody was obsessed about chatbots. That was the most, I guess, striking application that uh, customers envisioned. And everybody wanted to build a chatbot for their um, mobile app, their web app, their business app, whatever. So you couldn't open uh, a business newspaper or a tech blog without reading about chatbots. And we started to see companies launching some services. Um, looking back, uh, and I guess even back then, um, it, my opinion was that they were all pretty terrible. Um, they were probably a step forward uh, compared to you know rule-based chatbots, but honestly, they weren't really, really good. So, uh, well, I guess that was the starting point. And guess what? Um, Started in 2016, Hugging Face wanted to build a chatbot, right? And so they built this uh, friendly chatbot uh, and actually actually launched it. Um, and they wanted it to be, you know, friendly and safe and you know, like a, a a nice friend you would chat with. And well, they looked for a name that would reflect that friendliness. And um, Funny enough, um, they settled on that emoji, right? Uh, the hugging face emoji, which certainly looks friendly enough. And so that's where the name of the company comes from. It is literally the name of that emoji. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's fair to say the logo is very uh, easy to remember. And, uh, and I, very often I meet folks who say, yeah, I don't, oh yeah, you're the emoji folks. I, you know, the, the funny thing, the funny yellow thing. And say, yeah, yeah, that's us. Um, so, Hugging Face is the name of the emoji. So, Hugging Face launched their, their chatbot um, and, um, well, took a bit of uh, angel money to, to deliver this. So, well done for, for achieving that first milestone. And, of course, along the way, um, they learned quite a few things about natural language processing and conversational apps and, um, and AI in general. So, even though the chatbot wasn't a massive success, uh, it was a good first step in, in structuring the, the company and in starting to explore the natural language processing landscape and the AI landscape in general. And well, obviously, they were not the only ones doing that. And uh, in June 2017, something really important happened. And of course, I mean the release of the Attention is All You Need paper, which introduced the, the self-attention mechanism and how it could be used to build a new architecture of deep learning models called the transformer models, right? And these came out of uh, Google. So well done, Google, for that innovation. And, well, this is not a transformer talk. Uh, God knows there are quite a few <laughs> on YouTube and probably on my channel, but in a nutshell, transformer literally overnight uh, improved all the state-of-the-art benchmarks on natural language processing tasks like you know, translation, classification, question answering, etc. And very quickly, 
transformers made the previous deep learning architectures like uh, recurrent networks or convolution networks obsolete. So this was a massive breakthrough, but of course we were still in, in research territory and I guess only the, uh, the people in the know actually noticed something was happening there. And a year later, um, this innovation actually uh, became a little more concrete uh, as Google released the now famous BERT model which was the original transformer model um, and this is of course based on uh, the attention layer and their previous work and so they published uh, the paper itself they published uh, pre-trained models trained on uh, large quantities of text and uh, and some benchmarks that were also very very good and so this was a really exciting moment, and I remember that very well um, because we saw how those models were massively better than anything before. So the obvious next step, you know, for uh, for developers and and builders and just generally curious folks was to go and try to work with this. And I, I really specifically remember going to the to the GitHub repository for BERT, um, maybe a couple of days or a week after the, the model release. And well, this is what you saw, right? So we're releasing um, um, the, the, the model code, right? Not so much interested in the code. I mean, I want to try the, the models. Okay, so we have pre-trained checkpoints for BERT base, BERT large, that's pretty cool. And we have some fine tuning scripts uh, replicating experiments from the paper on uh, well-known benchmarks okay great and so i thought okay i'm not such a tensorflow expert at all uh, quite an understatement but okay i want to try this so i want to load the model i want to start predicting i want to start applying it to to some data that i have lying around and and i'll be honest with you i completely failed at doing that um so probably my own you know limitation not knowing enough about TensorFlow, not being able to figure out uh, the crazy jargon in, uh, in the paper, in the repo, in the code. But no offense to the authors, of course, but I think they didn't, go, did, they didn't do a good job at making this developer friendly in a nutshell. So unless you knew really, really what you were doing with TensorFlow, unless you really already knew a bit about Transformers, etc., it was really hard to work with this thing, okay? Or I'm just an idiot, as we all know. So I couldn't get anything done, really, and I left this very frustrated um, and, and feeling, you know, feeling stupid and feeling that, well, there's got to be, there's got to be a better way to, uh, to try those models and, and bring a developer experience um, that was more friendly, right? So, well, I moved on to other things. Um, in the meantime, something else happened. Uh, and I guess the frustration in, in TensorFlow, my own frustration, was shared by a lot of folks. Um, and starting um, late 2016, uh, PyTorch starting to happen. And if you look at the Google search trends, you can see, you know, from the first release uh, to, you know, maybe one year or one and a half year later, PyTorch popularity grew very very quickly um, and I think the the quote from uh, Andre Karpathy is uh, is extremely funny and uh, I think it reflects exactly what we were all feeling back then um, yes TensorFlow was awesome but it was awesome hard to work with as well and uh, and any friendlier more Python like <laughs> alternative uh, was was more than welcome so PyTorch rose very very quickly with the first you know v10 version coming at the end of 20, 2018 and well i guess the hogging face folks were looking at all of this of course um and they were involved in the field so they saw a new generation of models rising um yet very difficult to work with because of tensorflow because of google not going the extra mile you know to to deliver uh developer friendly tools and PyTorch kind of becoming that developer friendly tools for deep learning applications. So guess what? Uh, you know, uh, 
gasoline waiting for a spark. And, well, the spark happened, uh, and the first visible flame was on uh, November 2018, when Hogging Face released an open source library, uh, first v0 point something version, called PyTorch, pre-trained BERT. And, well, ex exactly what the name means, so it's a PyTorch-based uh, library um, providing a PyTorch implementation or re-implementation of BERT and, and based on the weights shared by, uh, by Google, right? And that's pretty clever because PyTorch obviously was easier to use and, and growing more and more popular. Um, you were still using the weights from the original model. And uh, of course you were using a simpler, uh, friendlier library. And, and I think if you ask me what made Hugging Face successful, it's exactly this. It's simplifying access to those state-of-the-art models, making it possible for less expert people to work with them. And so looking at an example, uh, I actually had to dig a little bit to find this uh, historical code, but it is still out there. Um, this is an example from PyTorch pre-trained birds 0.11, uh, showing you how you would uh, download bird base uncased, um, the, the tokenizer and the model and predicting with PyTorch. And, and for those of you who are maybe not so technical people, you might think, oh, wow, this is still insanely complicated. Uh, you have to take my word for it. Um, this is PyTorch based. This is reasonable Python. And this is stuff that, um, you know, 10x or 100x more folks could understand that then compared to the, the previous uh, TensorFlow insanity. And in particular, the, the one line access to those model artifacts hosted by, uh, by Hogging Face was pretty nice because you didn't have to go and chase models living in different places and different repos. Uh, you just download them in that one line of code, right? And of course, it started with BERT, and then very quickly we saw other transformer models popping up, um, OpenAI GPT and GPT-2, uh, back when the open part of their word actually meant something, and um, transformer XL, XLNet, XLM, etc. And it's funny to look at the release history for, for this library because you, you literally see every almost every day, every week, um, there, there are new models being added, and you can see the model collection growing by the minute. Um, of course, very quickly, it wasn't just about BERT. So uh, within a few months, they renamed the library to PyTorch Transformers and achieved uh, one zero milestone. And a few months later, uh, adding still more models and TensorFlow support because some of the TensorFlow users kind of like the fact that uh, they could also uh, they could also work with an easier uh, an easier library. They renamed it to Hugging Face Transformers. Right, so September 2019 is where the Transformers name really happened. And well, adoption started to grow. Um, I guess investors started to become more and more interested in the company and, and Series A happened at the end of 2019. And in the next, uh, in the next year, year and a half, um, um, the ball was rotting, you know, and it was snowballing and, and you know, Tens of models became, you know, hundreds of models. And before you know it, it became a thousand models. And, you know, it, it never stopped from there. Uh, and new features were added to the libraries and new libraries were implemented, you know, data sets and tokenizers and accelerate, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, Hugging Face was on its way. Um, another major milestone was also the first partnership um, with uh, a large tech company, uh, and that was AWS. Because of course, Hugging Face stands, um, is all about open source, right? Uh, we stand with the open source community, we help the open source community work with those state-of-the-art models. Um, but for enterprise customers and commercial customers, generally, there's always the need to simplify things. Uh, to accelerate their path to production and a, a ton of machine learning and AI is running in the cloud. So it was natural to go and um, um, try to talk to those companies and, and, and try to partner with them to collaborate on building 
a hugging face, a friendly hugging face ecosystem inside of um, machine learning services. And so the first company to realize that was AWS, March 2021. Uh, so, you know, last year I was hearing, oh, AWS is late to AI and Gen AI, etc. Well, not so much, because I think they were by far uh, the first large tech company to understand how open source AI was important, how fast it was growing, and how important it was to their customers. And so, um, in March 2021, Hugging Face started collaborating on integrating the Hugging Face libraries, the Hugging Face models, into um, Amazon SageMaker, and um, and generally um, uh, collaborating with AWS across the board. Funny enough, I was at AWS at the time, and I wrote the, as you can see, <laughs> the launch blog post for this. Um, this probably led to other discussions a few months later. Um, again, uh, this partnership um, um, and, and the, the rise uh, of Hugging Face led to Series B, 40 million, good number. Um, and that was a, a major step in, in developing the company. And in parallel, well, Transformers were taking over. And I think 2022 is the year where Transformers um, dominated the, the AI landscape. Um, you had so many models for natural language processing and computer vision and speech, etc., and that were outperforming. That, again, the legacy architectures uh, started to uh, fade away very, very quickly. Um, and so 2022 was really the year of Transformers. And naturally, adoption grew um, very, very fast. And what you see here is uh, the number of GitHub stars um, which is a bit of a vanity metric, but I think it represents how popular uh, a project is um, in the open source community. And uh, Hugging Face is the, the pink line. So um, you can see how quickly and how constantly um, the adoption of the Transformers library and other libraries happened. Um, and what I think is also interesting is, is if you compare that to the other trends for, I would say, previous technology waves. So big data um, was represented by, you know, Hadoop um, back in the day. And you can see Hadoop adoption, uh, although this is a bit biased because Hadoop was actually released before GitHub was even a thing. Um, uh, Hadoop adoption was nowhere like, uh, nowhere like uh, Transformers adoption. And the next wave was, uh, you know, real-time analytics and Spark. And Spark is, is amazing. Um, and the popularity of Spark grew pretty quickly. Um, and then deep learning happened. Um, and you can see the PyTorch uh, popularity there. And you can see the Transformers wave, right? And you can see it's you know bigger, faster, higher than anything else by far. Um, and it's really crazy how in just a couple of years, um, this, uh, this project has become the, the, the potentially the most popular um, data slash ML slash AI project out there. So I think it's a strong sign that this is real. You know, people ask me, is, is it a hype? Well, I say, I, I show them this, I say, well, do you think hundreds of thousands of people are, are using this because it's hype? I don't think so. Um, and I guess the investors uh, believe there was something happening too, because Series C, 100 million um, happened in, in May 22. So fast forward uh, to today, um, I think it's fair to call Hugging Face the focal point of open source AI. Um, we have uh, about a half a million pre-trained models uh, hosted on the Hugging Face Hub for natural language processing and computer vision and audio and speech and um, multimodal and gen AI and time series are a thing now, so it won't ever stop. So, you know, come with your problem and uh, we'll probably help you find uh, a model that is a good starting point for that project. Uh, we have 100,000 data sets and all those models and data sets are open source. You can download them in seconds, put them to work with our libraries, put them to work in the cloud. And um, as of uh, last summer, um, we are, uh, we've welcomed a pretty nice team of investors and you can see all the logos there and i find it fascinating that the largest tech companies in the world want to 
be at the table, right? They, they believe in open source AI. They want to have a seat at that table and they want to partner with Hugging Face. And I guess the best way to partner is also to be an investor. Um, and the reason for this is because they realize that um, the future of AI is open source. Um, their customers want to use open source models. And uh, regardless of the cloud, regardless of their hard underlying hardware, um, we need to work with those companies to give all those customers the best possible experience, right? And that's where we are today. So looking at, uh, let's say, uh, the big picture, um, in the bottom right corner, we have, yes, 100K data sets and half a million models, and the numbers change all the time. So <laughs> they are always out of date. Uh, and they're available on the public hub. So again, you can download them in a few seconds. Uh, for enterprise customers, we also have the enterprise hub, uh, bringing stronger security, stronger compliance, uh, generally uh, stronger control and some exclusive collaborative features as well. Um, we're still very much working on all our open source libraries from transformers to diffusers and accelerate and, and many others. Uh, and these are really the the core of, uh, of the Hugging Face experience. Along the way, we've also built a few of our own services. Um, the first one is Spaces. And Spaces is, is a simple way for machine learning teams to uh, host their model inside web applications uh, on managed Hugging, uh, managed hugging Face infrastructure. Uh, we have customers who use this as, a, as their internal demo platform, for example. And there's a free tier and there's a commercial tier if you want to upgrade to uh, larger spaces, more powerful spaces. If you've been playing with some of the latest models, um, I guess maybe the stable diffusion models, generating images, etc., chances are you've been running this inside Hugging Face space. Uh, the, the other service we built is uh, called Inference Endpoint, which lets you deploy one click, any model from the hub, so any one from those half a million models, uh, to manage infrastructure running on AWS or Microsoft Azure. Right, just literally one click, but of course it's all open source, right? So you can grab the models, you can grab your code, you can deploy this anywhere. So this is probably Hugging Face, you know, uh, if you haven't looked at us hard in the last year or year and a half, and maybe that's why people have been calling us the GitHub of machine learning, because they they see us as a place to find models and data sets. And fair enough, uh, I think the analogy worked for a while, but there's much more to Hugging Face than this. For example, uh, in the last couple of years, we've been building our own models, so net new models contributing back uh, to the to the community. So Bloom, um, um, an open source LLM, um, providing an alternative to GPT-3, uh, released in 2022. Starcoder, a code generation model, uh, released in 2023. Idefix, uh, uh, an open source reproduction of uh, DeepMind Flamingo, visual context model. So all those models have been designed and trained by Hugging Face to fill, I guess, gaps in the open source portfolio. Uh, we've also built Hugging Chat, which is our open source answer to chat GPT, 100% open source, UI models, backend, based on the best models out there. And of course, our cloud partners to help cloud customers run their Hugging Fist workloads uh, easily and cost effectively um, across their across those platforms. And last but not least, hardware partners um, and uh, the work in the, around our Optimum library, where we work with all those companies to accelerate model training and model inference, right? And of course, because some customers want to engage directly with us on the consulting and professional services, we have a program called the Expert Acceleration Program where our engineers work directly with you to bring you to production quicker than you thought possible. You may wonder, well, that's great, you know, congratulations, Hugging Face, uh, but you know, are you still true to your roots? And that's a fair question. Um, I've seen a lot of open source companies over the years becoming successful and, and you know, losing track of the original vision and they start doing the community edition and which ends up being a toy and the enterprise edition, which is where all the goodies are, but of course you have to pay for it. Um, so, well, that's absolutely not what we're doing. We're still very much focused 
on helping everybody out there use open source models in the simplest possible way anywhere they like, right? So this is the 011 example revisited, right? This is how you would do <laughs> that thing today. Um, and you can see we actually made it even simpler, right? Um, just download that model from the Hugging Face Hub and prompt it and get your answer. So if anything, we've kept simplifying the developer experience and, um, and making it even easier and easier for non-experts to work with those models. And you could say, well, okay, that's BERT, you know, uh, BERT was fine years ago. What about the newer models? Well, here's how you would work with Stable Diffusion XL, arguably uh, an amazing text-to-image model, an amazingly complicated model too. And you can see this is still simple, right? And uh, you can download the model, one line of code, create again a prediction pipeline, prompt it, create an image, save it. So I think, again, not only has Hugging Face stayed true to the original vision, it has simplified things even further, right? And regardless of how that crazy stable diffusion model works, regardless of how PyTorch works, uh, regardless of how the underlying infrastructure works, still very, very simple, right? And it, trust me, if we could remove anything here, we would. But I think this is probably as simple as it gets, right? And when it comes to using those models uh, for, uh, I would say, commercial purposes in your cloud platforms, etc., cetera, um, this is an example of deploying uh, Mixtral, so the latest and greatest model from uh, Mistral, the uh, mixture of experts model. Uh, you could think, wow, okay, this is, this is even, you know, this is next level in terms of complexity. So how do you do this? Well, you could deploy it and, and predict with it, just like I showed you with the transformers library on your own machine, or you can just go to the model page on the hub, click on deploy, select Amazon SageMaker, and we actually generate the, the SageMaker code that you need to run to deploy the model in your AWS account. And it's four or five lines of code. So um, again, that's the mission we have the latest amazing models coming from the open source research community. We take them, we integrate them into our open source libraries, and we integrate them through our cloud and hardware partnerships in exactly the same way. So there's no community edition or, or enterprise edition. It's the hugging face edition. And that means open source, state of the art, simple, works the same everywhere, right? And I don't think we'll ever compromise on that. Um, here's an example of the hardware acceleration work we do. And there are so many, and you'll find many examples on my channel. I, I wanted to highlight this because I think it's pretty cool. So this is a 7 billion parameter chatbot running on an Intel CPU, on a single Intel CPU. And you could think, well, how is that even possible? Because we would need a GPU for that, right? Well, not necessarily, because through... Uh, advanced techniques like quantization and hardware acceleration present on the latest uh, Intel chips, across, uh, among other chips. You can very efficiently and very cost-effectively run uh, large multi-billion parameter models on CPU. It's certainly a bit slower than GPUs, but it's certainly faster than I can read, which is kind of my benchmark, right? Um, I don't want a chatbot to be slower than me. Uh, so as long as the chatbot is generating fast, um, I'm happy with it. And of course, the, the cost performance ratio here uh, would be very, very good. And again, that's uh, the kind of work we're doing with those uh, hardware partners, Intel in this case. So summing things up, um, well, hugging face models are now the de facto standard for AI apps. And let me be clear, when I say hugging face models, I mean open source models built by the community and uh, hosted by Hugging Face, right? We're not building all those models. We are building models from time to time, but the huge majority of that half million model collection is coming from tech companies, uh, research organizations, etc. And we're very happy to be the, you know, I guess the, the flag bearer for all those uh, uh, community members. We are much more than the GitHub of machine learning. Uh, again, 
this analogy work for a while. Uh, I don't think it's uh, it's good enough anymore. Uh, we we are much more than a collection of models and data set, as you saw uh, in this presentation. We have first party integration on the most popular clouds. We have first party acceleration on the most popular hardware. So it doesn't matter where you want to run your AI workloads on what cloud or on what hardware you want to run it. Uh, we'll go and partner with all those companies to make it simple. And if you need to remember only one thing about Hugging Face, well, it's this. Open source, state of the art, simple. OSS, right? Just like open source software, very easy to remember. Well, this is really what I wanted to tell you today. So I hope I did answer all those popular questions. And I, you know, I won't mind if you ask again. Um, and I hope it highlights, and I hope this video also highlighted who we are, what we stand for, where we're going, and why we think open source AI is the best way forward. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. And until then, keep rocking.